targets up. It's Ragnaros landing a four-man Zulfuris smash. Durin's of hate from Mephisto, and this combination executed perfectly at the end of the game. From Alarak. Make it a quad kill set up by that e Wow, did you see that Mosh Pit? Four-man Mosh Pit, while on a conveyor belt. That was like a regular sushi line. Super at core at 50%. Both cores are just absolutely melting. Which one's going to go down first? I think this is going to be respect the gooses. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, the ring. Jaina's just pulling up everybody here. That's a four, make it five. And it does not fall up. What a play, oh my god, somebody please clip that. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. Uh, we're in the playoffs. We made it through the regular season, and tonight we're going to give you a little bit of Division D action. We're going to start off with a Division D East matchup between the Probius Strikes Back and Rise and Grind. I'm Arrow. That's my good friend, Alice. Now, Alice is uh, is not feeling super great. Uh, she got a little bit of a brawl the other day, so I may occasionally have to pay uh, a small amount of attention to her just to make sure she doesn't do something stupid like open up her ear wound again but that's not what we're here to talk about we're here to talk about these teams it's the probius strikes back and rise and grind and these teams are uh they're they're three and six i believe yes three and six in the standings but you know what why don't i show you what that looks like So Probius strikes back with the 20 points, just a couple of points ahead of Rise and Grind. They're, they're quite literally less than one game ahead in the regular season uh, overall points there, 20 to 18. Now, checking in, I just want to take a quick look here and see, you know, how things look. How did they do um, in the regular season when they played earlier here? So let's let's take a quick look at that here. Uh, let's see, where's RNG? There it is. So in the regular season, this was back on October 11th, so just about a month ago, Rise and Grind had a 2-0 victory over the Probius Strikes Back. So again, I mean, looking at this division, these are very close teams. 22 points at number one. Uh, I mean, you can see it's only a point or two between every single level until quite literally until you get to to the uh, the eighth team there. The seventh team through first are only one to two points away. So these teams are pretty darned close overall. Uh, let me see if this bracket actually set up here. And it looks like that's... Uh, I think that's correct. Let me just double check. So, yeah, because I think Franks was actually first overall in the standings. Um, so, yeah, so that looks right. The, the, the playoff brackets always look a little bit funny sometimes. Um... But it does look like that worked out. So Hot's Potato defeated I Must Feed 2-1 to one there. Uh, that'll be Hot's Potato's the next uh, opponent here for one of these two teams. Then, of course, up in the upper half of the bracket there, Franks Furters and Bad Matchmaker, they both uh, made it to round two as well. But check it out. Every single one of these matches, 2-1 to one victories. So maybe we'll get a game three here tonight. Looking forward to seeing that. Quick peek at the maps, then we'll get into the draft here. So Probius Strikes Back, they banned out Tomb of the Spider Queen and Towers of Doom, which means that I cannot root for them tonight. Uh, I'm very sorry, but uh, they did it, so it's up to them. Uh, Rise and Grind, they banned out Hanamura Temple and Volskaya Foundry. Our first map going to be on Infernal Shrines, and uh, it's a big map. A lot of opportunities here. It was picked by Rise and Grind. As you can see, our draft has begun. Not very far into it, just the Anduin and Sylvanas, so both of these heroes 
um, you know, have their niche. I think the, the interesting thing is that I believe somebody at the top said that basically Anduin was like just not on the top tier of healers. They, of course, made some adjustments to him. Um, but he's one of those heroes that if you're really good at play, if you play a lot with him, your team is coordinated around having that, that light bomb combo. Or, I mean, to be fair, we saw some absolutely stunning uh, salvation play out of a, the Clouded Minds team here in D West just a few days ago. So, I mean, he's got a lot of value in those ultimates. Sylvanas, of course, gets tons of value on Infernal Shrine. She allows the Punishers to do so much more. Diva, Cassia, these are two heroes that are just strong heroes. I mean, Cassia, I would say, is slightly above, very slightly above average. But again, it's another one of those types of heroes that if you're really strong, if this is a hero you're really comfortable on, you can have a huge impact. Uh, our first hero of the night is going to be Brightwing. And this is, this is interesting. So Brightwing opens up uh, a lot of potential opportunities. It could be a phase shift gank. It could be a counter dive. Um, you know, taking in that greater polymorph at level one gives you a lot of extra range, which means that you can potentially polymorph that Vala, especially if she tries to vault in, if she goes that build. Uh, Johanna's going to make that in some ways a little bit more difficult. But she's going to be that beefy front line that Vala needs to be able to get those attacks. Now, May and Chromie coming into this looking to kind of disrupt that a little bit. Chromie has those long bombs with that Dragon's Breath. And May, I mean, if she wants to, she can go in. She can dive in. She can throw that Avalanche. Or maybe she wants to Avalanche that front line away. And then the team can just move forward and seek out that Vala. Go probes. Probe pals are here, says Papa Patience. Lots of Probe uh, fans in the audience here. And there goes Dahaka. So taking away a couple of solo lane opportunities there with the Diva and the Dahaka. Uh, we do still have Healer and DPS and solo lane left available for Rise and Grind. What do we see here taken out? They already took out the Cassia, so not really looking for that synergy with Johanna. They could look for something like a, so uh, not a Sylvanas, a Sonya. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Back into the draft. Second half, we have five more heroes coming. And so we need some Shrine Clerk. Fall's okay with it. I mean, she can go and multi-shot and do all that stuff, but she's not going to be great. Now, Mephisto doesn't have great Shrine Clear, but it's it's really more about the team fight. He has the ability to go in, get a bunch of damage, get some resets, maybe get that uh, Durance of Hate out there. Could be. Malfurion, however, is a really good pick into that May. Because once she goes into our, her ice block, he can drop that root, and she's going to get caught there. If he takes the, I think it's strangling roots, that's less healing she gets. We're going to get the Chen and Rainer coming out here from the probes. I'll be there in 20 hours. <laughs> Fair enough, guys. Oh, man. Uh, and I have not been typing these. I'll probably do that. Our last pick is going to be our solo laner. Who's it going to be against Chen? You know what? I'd love to see an Arthas right here. Chen versus Arthas. Arthas can absolutely just bully Chen. Uh, it's, a, it's going to be the Thrall. Though. Hopefully none of these changed. Then we'll get into our... Uh, our our vote. Oh. All right, let's get our vote going here. I'm at work. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, these are our drafts for game number one. Who do you think's gonna win? Who wins game number one? Words are hard, guys. Uh, is it gonna be our Probius team on the left? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use Probius. I'm not gonna type the whole name out, guys. And then or is it gonna be Rise and Grind on the right? Who do you think's gonna win? Hit the drop down, select the team that you think will win or that you're here to cheer for. You know what? Vote for whoever you want. I don't care. 
There's no rules regarding this. Just just hit that vote button. And uh, then we'll talk about it. If I remember. <laughs> if I remember. Hmm. I hope I don't have any of those uh, automated Nightbot things going out that aren't relevant. But uh, it doesn't matter. We're going to get into game number one on Infernal Shrines between Probius Strikes Back and Rise and Grind. On the left, Probius Strikes Back, the number three seed from Division D East. It's M10 on the May. Desda on Brightwing. Digital Legacy on Raynor. Orobi on Chromie. And Badgerlord on the Chen. And for Rise and Grind, our number 16, but only two points behind. It's Rise and Grind, if I didn't say that already. We've got Eris there on the Vala. We got Azrael Abyss on Johanna? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Life DG there on Malfurion. We got uh, Brother Nature on Mephisto, and Thrall going to be played by Last Dispatch. And, and in just a brief moment there, it almost looked like there was somebody stealth next to Thrall, or coming up, like right here, it looked like there was maybe somebody coming up. I was really confused there. I was like, oh no, it's Nova, but there's there's no Nova in here. Arby's wins as the most supportive husband. There you go. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, well, rotation's coming in. Let's take a look at these level one talents. Uh, you know, again, both of these tanks do have pretty decent wave clear, right? Johanna can use that Condemn to bring them together, make it a little bit easier for the the team on the side of uh, Rise and Grind to be able to pick those up. But May has that Blizzard, can get the entire minion wave inside of there, stun them, all of that. Big, big vote count in favor of Probius here. Let's see if uh, let's see if the the cheering fans for Probius carry these these guys through on game number one. But I mentioned uh, I mentioned these level one talents. Of course, Chromie now has her level two as both teams getting that mid lane siege camp going and possibly eyeing this bottom camp. And oftentimes, what you'll see is if one camp has the faster wave clear clear. They may clear out this lane, head up to the mid lane to deal with the siege camp, but that leaves the bot lane siege camp open. So we'll see if uh, if that ends up being the case, or if both teams just kind of continue. And it looks like they're both going to head up here, although uh, Furion's sticking around there just for that last bit of XP. It's going to be Rolling Thunder there for Thrall, trying to help with that not only percent damage, but also the healing that he gets from that in this 1v1 versus the Chen up in the top there. Hypershift going out, keeping the May nice and healthy. Now, keep in mind, May herself has a significant health bonus when she pops her Cryo Freeze, getting 40% of her health. That's why you might see here the uh, Strangling Vines right there, 40% less healing. So that is a huge value, especially if Malfurion can land that around, say, the time that uh, Brightwing's trying to phase shift in. Brightwing took Hyper Shift at level 1, so she's got that extra 10%, but also the cooldown reduction. Now, I don't think that in any way will impact if she takes the level 7 uh, peekaboo for that extra shield. Now, can, uh, can, can Thrall get this? It doesn't look like it, but that's exactly that phase shift gank that I was talking about. And the Gladiator's Medallion used just in time. About 75 health there on that Thrall, able to make it out just barely. Barely? Get it, Chen? Huh? Huh? Come on! Come on! It's a tough audience out there. But with probes getting their Shaman Camp, they're going to have that pushing here at least for a little bit during this. As Rising Grind already about 30% uh, of the way complete on this, a little bit beyond here. And Chromie now finishing her deep breathing is going to have a cooldown reduction and mana cost reduction, if I remember correctly, for both of those. Is that correct? Yeah, cooldown reduction of four seconds. That's pretty big for something like this. Now, the problem right there for Mephisto, what I was just going to point that out, is Mephisto can come in, but he's only got two, two and a half seconds to be able to do that damage, and then, sure, he can he can go back. He can rubber band back. But if the enemy team has a pretty good idea of where you're going, that's a lot of damage coming in. So there you go. Chromie, Hirobi there 
predicting where he was going and getting that. Now, M Tano taking a lot of damage for Roby getting the face shift as May having to use that cryo freeze to just stay healthy and alive. Uh, but it is actually going to be the Probius strikes back, picking up the Punisher, but they do secure the kill onto May. So getting that kill will really allow for Rising Grind to have a better opportunity to clear this and take less damage. I don't want to say minimal damage, because uh, the Punisher still is going to do a fair bit. But they're going to be able to get most of this wall. Actually, all this wall looks like pretty well. And Mephisto going in, nine health, Punisher. John Cena coming in says, what do you think you're doing? How dare you? Not in my house, he says. Punisher for MVP. And with that, you know, the Punisher's gonna go down, but uh, Probius is gonna be able to pick up that offensive siege camp, steal that away, get that XP, but also now force Rise and Grind to come here and deal with this for a bit. Checking in on those medallions. So far, three of them have been used there. As you can see, Chen's used his and Thrall has used his. Now, those were in that same fight. We saw uh, Thrall use his, but, uh, but you know, weren't quite there for for, for Chen. But uh, Malfurion used his a little bit ago, too. So a lot of medallions still available here. And, of course, some of these heroes just have natural cleanses, like uh, Johanna. A lot of damage coming in on, onto Azrael Abyss, nearly getting taken out from that chromy bomb damage. That third hit would have been enough, but of course, chromy damage goes in a line. So once you see that first point, you have a general idea that you need to be aware, and then the second one gives you the direction. So don't stand in it, right? That's a, that is the <laughs> the Punisher has spoken. I love it, Tuna. I love it, Arby's. That's so true. So true. I have spoken. Well, this time, with that root, Brother Nature going in on the Mephisto, getting a lot of damage in onto Digital Legacy and Desda, uh, but they will both make it up. Now, the really positive thing here for Probius is that they've got a pretty significant amount of spell armor in the form of Brightwing. That Pixie Dust gives a base of 30, if I remember correctly? 30 or 35 and then increases by another 15 or 20, it, it definitely becomes 50, although it might even be as much as 55. I think they increase that. So, you know, if they go consume souls, uh, there's at least a big counter to that. Now, Brother Nature, again, taking a lot of damage with his level seven talent here, taking Frostorm. He's slowing the enemy heroes when he goes in, makes it a little bit easier to keep that uh, Lightning Nova on there. But the other challenge here is, there's the Gladiator, oh, big, uh, Blessed Shield there is going to get a double, triple, maybe a quad kill. The Avalanche deep into the back of Rise and Grind, but that left the entire backline of Probius completely exposed, and they took great advantage of that. And that all began with Mephisto uh, using his Shade of Mephisto, Chromie saying, Haha, you're going to go back, but I'm going to bring you right back to me. Brother Nature says, Hold up, we're playing Uno. I got a re Uno. I got a reverse card, and uh, it's on a five-minute cooldown, so it's not going to work next time. But this time it worked, and that set that really set up Rise and Grind to be able to come in because it looked like Probius would be able to get that kill and then potentially go farther. Chen having to go back there as uh, the full five-man team of Rise and Grind. On the point, heroics are available for most heroes. There's no Avalanche, there's no Twilight Dream. But the rest of the team on both sides have their heroics here. Those Savage Roots coming out onto the May causing a little bit of a problem there, bringing her pretty low. There's the Earthquake to slow down the team as uh, Panda Pal's coming in. Here comes the Consumed Souls. I don't think Desda lives through this. Definitely not. May as well. And uh, Chen, Chen's ever so rarely going to die when using Storm Earth and Fire, but in that case, it turns out Mephisto, with that cooldown reduction, um, able to hit multiple heroes, essentially, getting a ton of value, and now this game turning around pretty significantly. Rise and Grind was able to get this full fort down thanks to that earlier push, and now this Punisher going right up to the keep wall after a brief stint with a couple of minions, of course. Eight kills to two. And 
Twilight Dream is back on the uh, on the playbook here. Punisher already under half, and the wall is fully going to go down now. I mean, this is really the opportunity for, for Rise and Grind to pull back. They got a lot of value getting that keep exposed. And they don't want to fight under that. And that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to come down, pick up the Siege Camp. Just like we saw in the, in the very early game, they're going to pick up the Siege Camp, put the pressure out there, and that's going to have to be responded to by Probius at some point here. Uh, they So they did Majesty, and then it did not go well for them. <laughs> because he used his uh, his medallion. Now, that being said, that medallion is a much longer cooldown than Temporal Loop, so they definitely do need to take advantage of that at some point here in the near future because that medallion's coming up from Mephisto again in two minutes. Chen a little bit far forward here. Probably needs to be mindful that there's a rotation coming up here. Is uh, definitely pulling back... Probably is okay. He uses the stagger. Of course, has that shield, so fortifying, or I guess just uh, his his brew. Not fortifying brew. That's a talent, which he probably didn't take. Right? Yeah, ring of fire. Rising grind. Going to head over, pick up their shaman camp, and get that on the map. And of course, this is in the top lane coming up soon. I think this is a frozen punisher. Yeah, it is frozen punisher. So this is a high value punisher. It's very important. Either team is really going to want to get this because it shuts down those structures. And there goes the uh, the temporal loop. Here comes Mephisto. Big dive in from Chen. Is going to try to pop the Panda Pals. Can't quite do it. Emtino is going to get that avalanche. And they do secure the kill onto Mephisto. Can they get the Vala too? Big damage come out from Komi, but it's just not quite enough. Is Johanna deep into the back line, but all by herself pretty much. So just the one kill, but that sets up a that sets up a start. But Robius has some some challenges to deal with up in this top lane. And keep in mind too, 18 seconds on Chromie's timer here. Pretty sure that medallion for Mephisto can be up by the next time they have that that the next time the next team fight for sure. We'll know that here in just a moment. Uh, yeah, 15 seconds. So unless they manage to take it literally as soon as they see Mephisto, that's going to be up. So Chromie, if Chromie is being mindful, she knows that, right? If you're if you're playing Chromie and you take Temporal Loop into a Mephisto, you're timing that. You know that five minutes ago I did this and he survived because of that. So it's really going to be up to the rest of Probius to try to find a way to burn that medallion so that they can make benefit of that. But here comes the third Punisher of the game. It is the Frozen Punisher, and right now, we see Probius a little bit behind. 15 to 16, a full uh, three, three quarters of a level away from that level 16 power spike that they're looking for. Of course, of course Chromie has her level 16 talent, as she gets those a little bit earlier here. Here comes the uh, Temporal Loop. There's the Cleanse. And there goes Storm Earth and Fire. It was interrupted earlier. Cryo Freeze coming out. But this big Twilight Dream going to silence onto Chen and Meg. And it's going to help secure both of those kills. And that's going to give Rise and Grind the opportunity now to get right on the Punisher camp here. Or Punisher uh, objective, rather. And of course, in the mid lane, all the while, that fight was taking place. Siege Camp getting to work. And, and once again, kind of what happened there was the cleanse went out and uh, uh, the front line of Probius ultimately deciding, hey, this is this is the time we need to go in. And not really recognizing that opportunity for that cleanse on the other side. And that's, that's put them in an overextended situation. And both times that that's happened, they've lost, taken heavy losses. Uh, the Twilight Dream, though, absolutely clutch. Really helped to make sure that neither Mei or Chen could cause too many problems in that back line. Punisher's going to get pulled over. Brought down to half pretty quickly. Uh, this full wall is going to go down here as Mephisto doing some work. He is coming back this time, though. And is it enough? He is very low, but not quite low enough. 
Chromie just not enough damage by herself. As the keep may actually go down here. It's very close. It is shut down. The minions will finish the job. And uh, a big root went out onto the front line of Probius. I believe that was Thrall. Uh, last dispatch. Putting the, putting the brakes on. Making sure that Probius, with now that they have those level 16 talents, can't continue the fight. Chen trying to make sure that no additional damage comes in onto this bottom keep as Rise and Grind are going to start the rotation, picking up as many of the camps as they can uh, while Probius is busy dealing with lane stuff. And, you know, if... Honestly, if I'm Probius, the moment that I see this camp taken, I almost want you to go here. And, and just... Hey. Pardon me for a second. Alright, so anyways. I think they're done. Uh, the idea was, if you come here, you can set up for that... Uh, that gank play, right? Because you know that they're going to want to come up there. It's going to take a little bit. It's going to it's gonna be a little bit of time. You can either just take the camp or uh, or set up, you know, that play with a, the Storm Earth and Fire, with the Avalanche splitting the team. It's a little risky of a play, but it's it's ideally the best fight that they can get pre-20. Because here it comes. There's the, uh, there's the Mephisto going in. We've got May in the back line. No Avalanche yet. Was looking for it, I think. Got Twilight Dreamed, but Rainer going to take out the Mephisto. Now, Brightwing in deep with the May as Chen going in with Storm Earth and Fire. Looking for the Vala. Chromie with that Dragon's Breath is going to get a lot of damage, but it's not enough. Brawl, just in the nick of time, is going to uh, get a big heal there and pull away. Thanks to that Earthquake, forcing now Probius to pull back. Uh, they're going back in, though, because even though they have level 20s, Proby says, we don't care. We've got the man advantage. But this is a problem right here. You got a couple catapults. You got a shaman camp coming in. That's got to be dealt with. So they do get the one kill. That's a, a big value play for them. And it gives them some catch-up XP. They're gonna, it's a little bit of an uphill battle now because this Punisher is going to be a big challenge. Coming through the bot lane, there's no keep wall. It's going right into a three-quarters health keep. So if Probius doesn't pick this up, and right now it looks like that would be relatively difficult given the status of their uh, their levels there, um, it's going to be a tough defense. They do have some XP coming into their lane, coming into their half of the map up in the top. So they could pick that up, uh, but I don't see any path for them to get level 20. So they have to choose now. Do they want to fight down level 20s, knowing that basically all of the ults are up? Or defend the strong push of a Punisher and five. Five heroes. But they have to be able to get level 20 for that to, to work. Right now, it's looking very difficult. So looks like that's what they're going to do. They're going to elect to defend. They got a half a level to go here. So most likely, I think I I think what would be ideal is they leave Chen with the group. They send Brightwing to go clean this up, at least one of these lanes, and then so that she can shift back in because she could she could very easily get the uh, level twenty from maybe even just this wave. But as as slow as this Punisher is moving, they could probably just get this XP right now. Anyway. And almost there. Not quite. There we go. All right, and it is important to note here, Chromie taking stuck in a loop. So Mephisto, you think you're getting out. You're coming right back, buddy. That Gladiator's Medallion, we see you. So keep an eye on that here. The Punisher already under half health. It's dying very quickly. Uh, Bless the Shield coming out. Chromie getting absolutely just brought to almost nothing. Rainer getting the silence here. Herobian danger. The timeout just not enough as... Uh, Mephisto there popping off with the Consumed Souls, and even though the Punisher's low, it is wailing on the core. This Mortar Punisher throwing out those fireballs, and that's going to be game number one going over to Rise and Grind. There. Uh...
Let's see if it's this one. Uh, no, it's not. I thought I had a stats page, but maybe that... Maybe that's not where I think it is. Killed my Ison. I'm assuming that's my eye son. I don't know. Like maps like that's and this I mean this has to be it, but there. Well, so be it. Such is life. Four kills to eleven. We see the stats here. For a little while. Let me show you those level 20 talents again. And I I gotta tell you, I mean, I think that really uh the, the a <laughs> hundred percent of this is on Mephisto. Like, like don't get me wrong, the rest of the team, the the Twilight Dreams on point, Johanna on point, you know, I can imagine the comms from Rise and Grind basically saying Oh, don't worry, guys. I got this. I have my medallion. Go get them. And that's what happened, right? The the Probius team said, I can get this. They didn't get it. And then uh, and then the rest of Rise and Grind coming in. And no, no, no. We get this. Can we get a re? <laughs> Is that a re? Is that what you're looking for? Like... Like that kind of a re. So that's game number one between the Probius Strikes Back and Rising Grind. Uh, we've seen again that this division is a very close division. Let's take a look at those standings again. Uh, as you can see, very close. These teams are only two points away. In the regular season, it was Rising Grind that took the 2 0 victory over Probius. They're looking to do that again. Probius looking for their first map win against Rising Grind. So it's it's really important for them to gather themselves. I mean, this is playoffs, right? This isn't a regular season. So it's not just get a point. It's you got to win. So they got to gather themselves, kind of figure out, shake off some of the, the jitters, if you will, but find out what it is that they can do differently to make sure that game number two is successful for them. And Rising Grind... They got to be looking at this and saying, okay, how do we make sure that that doesn't happen? What what did we do well, and how can we make sure that we do that again? What adjustments can we make to ensure victory? And let's see if... Yeah, that's not me. Just double-checking to see if we had any idea on where we were going next. But not yet. Never, under, uh, never underestimate a probe backed into a corner. That's true, because a probe backed into a corner likely has a whole bunch of warp rifts, and the moment you come into that corner, you're just going to get blown to bits, right? One shot. One shot, one kill is is uh, Nova, you know, part of probes? Could be. Right. We are going to take just a short moment while we wait to figure figure out where we're going for our next map. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to send you to good old Blizzard commercials. Be right back. I have been abundantly clear, usurper. This realm belongs to me. Behold the power of the Dark Nexus.
I shall bring order to this realm. And the Nexus itself. The Dark Nexus. It is mine to wield. All right, everybody, we're back, and uh, we're going to Battlefield of Eternity. <laughs> and I brought a good friend of mine up to say hello. Maybe for not for very long, though. She doesn't seem to be too 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 excited to be up here. Hey, you want to you want to say show everybody at home your uh, your, your your war wounds? You want you want to show that? Uh. Eh, you can't really see it. She got scratched on her ear. But uh, anyways, our next map here is going to be Battlefield of Eternity, and it looks like it is the selection of Probius. There you go. Uh, are you going to be the caster, Alice? New caster, folks. Alice, right here. She's, uh, she's taking over. Doesn't speak very well. All right, how about you get down now? She is a big dog. But anyways, all right, so we're going to Battlefield of Eternity. This is the selection of the Probius Strikes Back. They're all set and ready to go. As we've seen here, we did just finish up that Infernal Shrines that was picked and won by Rise and Grind. Our bands tonight coming out from Probius were on Tomb of the Spider Queen and Towers of Doom. Rise and Grind, they banned out Hanmer Temple and uh, Volsky Foundry. So there you go. That's where we're at. That's how we got to here. And here is Battlefield of Eternity. Our first draft ban coming here in just a moment. Uh, last game we saw from uh, Rise and Grind, we saw the Sylvanas and the Diva. Eventually, they also banned out the Dahaka. So it wouldn't surprise me to see perhaps the Sylvanas ban continued. Uh, but instead, they're going with the Lee Ming. Meanwhile, Probius, they banned out the Anduin and Cassia at the beginning. And I gotta say that Malfurion brought a lot of value. Those Twilight Dreams were clutch in multiple fights to make sure to protect the backline uh, from the Chen and A coming in to fight them. Looks like we are going to stick with the Cassia. That was uh, the second band that Probes had used last time. Oh, we got a couple of follows here. Bluest Oyster and uh, RNG Probiwan. I mean, that that fits kind of with the Probius Strikes Back theme. I kind of wonder. I don't know. But uh, we are going to get that Sylvanas band. So pretty much about... I mean, both of those heroes are really strong here. Uh, I'm not surprised to see the Leeming band. Sylvanas, surprisingly, is probably less likely picked here. But she can still be very strong. And it's going to be 
here, Probius. Are they going to look at that Anduin? Do they potentially take out a different hero? I mean, Vala's very strong here. They could look to take Vala out of contention for this. It's actually going to be Brightwing. So no Brightwing being taken out. There's still plenty of race heroes from both sides here that they can uh, look at. Could see some some very different heroes from what we saw last round. Obviously, the Vala very strong. Uh, Diva doesn't have great race, um, but she she brings a lot of utility to her team. Depending on how Last Dispatch chooses to build. All right, I know where this is going. We've got the Johanna now. Be interested to see. If they take the the rest of their cup, looks like they're gonna take the uh, Orpheum. But Johanna Orphea again. I mean, that's a very strong combo. You've got the Condemned to pull everybody together. You've got uh, the Punish to stall them. Right, that big slow potentially an eighty percent slow if you go with the uh, if that level seven subdue. And then Orphea, she's got that crushing jaws. Or you might even see Eternal Feast with that. If you can hold them down for that period of time, you get uh, a few extra seconds. And, I mean, it's several hundred damage every second. And it keeps going. So, could see that Eternal Feast combo. I think most likely it's crushing jaws, but we'll see. As we get Vala and Anduin. So, uh, Murden's actually going to be the ban. Murden is... This is... This is a really good map for Murden. I like Murden a lot here. Uh, Sledgehammer gives him a lot of race value, especially when he completes his uh, trait quest, allowing him to get that cooldown reduction on his uh, on his cues on his Stormbolt. And we'll see if Rise and Grind has the same idea that I do. They do not. Lucio going to be the main. All right, so we still have our healer, which I think Anduin would, would have been great with this. Having the uh, the Johanna on side of Probius uh, with Anduin would have been great, but that's not available. Obviously, it was banned in game one. They took it here. Uh, it's going to be Stukov. Oh, Stukov is really, really good for this too. Now those mech explosions, not so not so big of a deal, right? You push them away, you slap them away, and suddenly your team just doesn't care, right? That becomes a, an instant disengage. Um, and Diva's arguably biggest weapon no longer an issue. Raymain, big race value here. Um, in addition to the potential for a cursed bullet to bring somebody down quickly or maybe finish them off. These are some pretty squishy heroes here on the side of Rise and Grind. But we're going to get a Kel'Thuzad and ETC. So if ETC can land a Mosh, he can get that combo. Between Vala and Kel'Thuzad, this is going to be a, a dead heat. Dead hero or dead few heroes potentially. A lot of ways to stop that though, right? Johanna can stop it. Orphea potentially could stop it. Uh, with either ult, I mean, if she goes Eternal Feast, it's just gonna chomp ETC to death. Uh, Stukov can stop it, and potentially the Ragnaros. Exactly, as expected. Uh, this is not gonna be a lava wave. This will be a Sulfurous Smash. This is a combo that Probius has run time and time again. Not just this season, but in the past where they get the Johanna Condemn. Maybe they throw out a Blessed Shield, maybe they don't, right? I mean, they may not need it, but you get Johanna Condemn, the Sulfurous Smash, and uh, whatever else. Like, you've got some really big damage heroes from the Greymane and Orphea. Then on top of that, you have Stukov to put that silence down. This is a really strong combo and, and very comfortable for the side of uh, Probius. Now I gotta type all this stuff really quickly. Then I'll do our vote. Dispatch. Man, am I gonna have enough time to? I'm gonna have enough time. I, I'm doing this vote. Oh, <laughs> who wins game two? Yeah. 
be all right vote is up in chat you know what to do i'm not going to go through the whole spiel again let's get these teams introduced on the left looking to get their first victory against rising grind it's the probius strikes back they need this win to stay in the playoffs we got digital legacy playing the gray main Emtino on the johanna desda on the stukov Hirobi on orphia and badger lord on ragnaros and rise and grind looking to close this set out on matching mounts no less we've got eris on the volo we got life dg on the anduin uh let's see brother nature on the kelthazad azrael abyss on the etc and diva gonna be played by last dispatch now kelthazad and mephisto very different heroes Going to be looking to get those chains out there just like that, get that combo, and build up those stacks as quickly as possible uh, so that Kel'Thuzad can get that that big burst of additional damage when he gets to 30, that 75% additional damage. Um, and, you know, probes who've uh, maybe been watching the, the Probius team, the original, the OG Probius team, they are no strangers to the Kel'Thuzad. Our level one talents here, it's gonna be the pro moves. Oh, no, I'm sorry, full metal for uh, for, for D.Va there, giving her that self-sustain. Um, that helps her to, that'll help her in the immortal phase as well, right? Because she can get in close to that immortal, uh, get a bunch of healing out of that. Follow, of course, going into Monster Hunter so she can get the additional damage uh, because she's really the primary damage for the team against the immortal. Now. <laughs> that figures. I come up here to look because Diva's looking like she might die, but no, they get the kill down here. Vala versus Orphea. And probes, they've still got the, the momentum in the fan base out there. Everybody wants that uh Probius win here. We'll see if, if they can accommodate this round. Yeah, Majesty says lot not it's not gonna be lava wave, dude. I'm telling you, it's not gonna be lava wave. With the siege camp being picked up here, Rise and Grind making their way onto the point. Uh, Brother Nature getting very low, not quite going to be able to secure that kill, but ETC also pretty low. Greymane looking to try to continue that fight, but the Chastise coming in, and we'll put the pause on that. Up in the top earlier there, Greymane, when the kill onto Orphea did take place, went up there to uh, pick up that siege camp. Awful nice of him, helping out that solo lane. Both teams now making their way to the Shaman Camp. This is pretty standard. Try to get your Shaman Camp so that it's putting pressure in the lane while the Immortal phase is going on. And we see here Ragnaros heading back. Needs that mana for the objective phase. Both teams maybe even just a, a few moments early. This does give a little bit of potential clear time. We're going to see Vala getting right onto the Immortal Burn. We'll see who has that favor right now. It looks like it's slightly in favor of Rising Grind. Uh, just a, actually, it's just a little bit in favor of Probius, and I think that's, you know, primarily because Monster Hunter's not done yet, right? I mean, she's only got uh, well, she hasn't gotten any on Puncturing Arrow, so Probius already on their point. So Greymane's gonna get started and uh, bringing this down very quickly. And to know deep into the enemy team here. Mech Explosion's coming out as Johanna very low, hasn't having to pull back. Greymane also pretty low as uh, Ragnaros kind of left out all by himself. And the, the real downside here for Probius is not only are they down the one level, of course, which is, I mean, that's not nothing, uh, but they, they don't really have that long-range poke. The Li Ming was banned out. Follow over here. I mean, she can do whatever she wants. She's got that that range with that Q. Anna's gonna pop that iron skin to stay alive as the immortal will go down, and it's gonna be the Probius coming in with the first immortal of the game. Not a ton of shielding, but it could be just enough to get that structure value. Maybe they can get this uh, whole wall. It's an early immortal. It doesn't do tons of damage. Especially when you've got a ball on the other side. Now, Orvia being really far forward here. Lots of CC. The Immortal knocking ETC back. Giving ETC the opportunity there to finish that kill. 
It is best of three, yes. It, it actually says that at the top. Just letting everybody know in case, uh, in case you missed that. And that being said, taking a look at these two teams. Definitely one team having to use their gladiator medallions a little bit more. And you can see that in the Ragnaros, the Greymane, the Orphea. They've all had to use that medallion. And why do you think that is? Pretty sure it's this guy right here. Our good friend Kel'Thuzad. Getting those combos. I mean, at this stage, doesn't necessarily mean a kill. It could, right? I mean, he gets a combo and then ETC throws down a slide, maybe a chastise in there. Somebody's going to die. But definitely once Kel'Thuzad gets up to 30 stacks, that's going to be a very dangerous place to be. You see here, uh, Ragnaros versus D.Va getting brought down pretty low. Grameen is, of course, very close by. But, uh, let's, let's turn that off. Uh, very close by, but finishing up that Siege Camp. So, can't really come in to finish off the D.Va instead. Bottom lane Siege Camp picked up by Rise and Grind as they do get that Chastise. And again, the Johanna. Johanna's uh, probably not the most, you know common tank that you see taking those chains from Kel'Thuzad, uh, but she doesn't have any way to move quickly, right? I mean, ETC can kind of, you know, move around. He's got that uh, loudspeakers if he wanted to knock that Kel'Thuzad back or anything like that. Blaze can charge away. You've got Mei who can charge away, but Johanna just walks. She doesn't have the opportunity to get away. Uh, BO3 was Battlefield of Eter of Three Eternity. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love it. All right, well, again, I mean, the, the race potential here is very much in favor of uh, Probius, as long as they're going to be there. Ragnaros trying to go in deep is going to get chained to the ice block there, the uh, Glacial Spike. And halftime is procced for Probius. Level 10's coming up very shortly for Rising Grind. They'll get it from passive XP as M Tano is gonna get caught. They don't need passive XP, they'll just get the kill. And they can pretty safely come over here to uh, the Probius aggressive side and really put the work in on this immortal. Fallen now sitting almost halfway done with that puncturing arrow. Elphazad done with his stacks. This immortal is going to go down very quickly. And it's going into the top lane. So that's that's favorable for the, the Probius team because now they've got that Shaman camp going in the bot lane. It means that D.Va has to deal with that. So this isn't going to be a full five-man push up in the top lane, but it may very well be a... Okay, it's going to be a four-man defense. They don't want to leave uh, D.Va to push in that lane. Ragnaros going to pop that Molten Core and uh, try to put as much damage from afar into that Immortal as possible. Maybe get a little poke in on the teams as well. And uh, we'll eventually fall here as the Immortal. will bring him down pretty quickly. The positioning there, Rag just begging to get caught by ETC. Very lucky that ETC wasn't in a slightly uh, better position there. Could have, could have been a dead Ragnaros. Johanna rotating up, D.Va along with her, and there's the Condemn. Now, doesn't have a whole lot of health here, so there's the uh, combo, but the Salvation is going to come in, gives a little bit of healing, but basically the whole backline of Rise and Grind says, nah, we're out of here. They end up losing both the Vala and the Kel'Thuzad. Big mosh pit that got interrupted there, and uh, looking maybe for this D.Va. Big Condemn pulling D.Va out of her rush, whatever it is, her Q, her thrusters, and now the chase is on, M Tano versus Last Dispatch, and it turns out Johanna just really doesn't have any good chase. Maybe if she took Subdue and got it completed. Uh, she didn't, so that's not happening. That's about the only way I can think of that, that Johanna could really catch up and, and do anything to the, uh, to the D.Va. So, Siege Camp... Picked up here by Probius. They've been on top of the camps. I think that the camps are pretty even here. Mercenaries, 3,600 to 2,800. Um, and I think that's just because there was like a one camp difference. But this is actually going to put up a little bit more in favor of probes here. And give them a little bit of pressure in this bot lane that now D.Va's going to have to deal with. 
Uh, well, Ms. Windup Bird, just so that you're aware, we actually have another match coming up right after this between Regen Define and uh, Knights That Stay Bronze from the West. So you're going to have plenty of entertainment tonight. There's the knockback. Keeping ETC alive, juking the Sulfura Smash there. And now the double stun, two Gladiator Medallions used to keep uh, both Ragnaros and Johanna alive. But can Johanna get out? It's not looking so great. Oh no, it's Stukov as well. Caught by the chains there. And that's right here. This is this is it right here. Uh, wait, no, that's not it. I was thinking there was a chains cooldown reduction, but I guess they didn't take it. Never mind. Uh, th looks like they're also going to get Ragnaros. It's not looking good in the mid game here for Probius. They they're very close in XP, thirteen to thirteen. So they they were a little bit behind uh, at this point last game, but this rush is going on to the Immortal as Rising Grind. Now Vala sitting at fourteen stacks, uh, gonna be able to burn this down quickly between that Kelpazod and Vala. Halftime procked. And Ragnaros is coming back onto the map. This is going to be the best opportunity for probes to get back into this game. They they have to make a play here soon. They cannot continue to lose structures, lose these team fights. They do have uh, Ragnaros with that Molten Core. And it's not the end of the game, by any means. But there needs to be a solid defense, and I think that I think Rag is. Uh, I think Rag would have done better down here with it. They get that. They do get the one wave of XP. They're, they're going to lose that for it either way. But there's still a lot of health on this immortal. Tons of shielding here. There's the molten core, and we'll see how much value Rising Grind can get out of this. Chains coming out is not going to land on the second hero, but Greymane diving in is going to get stunned away by the Immortal now having to dive away. Doesn't have a lot of health. And uh, hitting that healing well. To try to get pulled back up. Glacial Spike is going out, but nobody really in range to pull in as they keep falling now down to half health. Again, the Immortal still very healthy. It's about three quarters of its health still going. Kel'Thuzad once again with a massive combo. Going to get the Ragnaros and the Johanna. But it's actually ETC who's going to pay for it. And a, a big flailing swipe there from Stukov. Going to give them a disengage so that they can come back and deal with this. And just barely missing that chain combo is Kel'Thuzad. Uh, but Rising Grind looking really strong in this game. Taking their third structure so far, losing their tank in that, and still managing to keep the pressure on. And they're very close to level 16. There's that Glacial Spike. Uh, not going to hit as the Unstoppable proc by Johanna there. And that's Sometimes that's a, that's a mixed bag of goods, right? Because sometimes that Unstoppable actually makes it more difficult for your teammates because you end up pulling them into a bad position. So that is that is a challenge sometimes when playing Johanna into the Kel'Thuzad is, you know, being mindful of your use of your Unstoppable and how it affects your teammates. All right, 16's now here for Rising Grind. And I mentioned, you know, this, this D.Va build. We talked a, a little bit about it, but... This here, the rush down, that's the second uh, nerf that was to rush down here very recently. Dropped the percentage once again. Also dropped the damage it does to non-heroes, basically. And uh, level 16 for D.Va there, giving the additional radius on that defense matrix. Also gives her healing. So anytime... A hero does damage while in the defense matrix. She gets a little bit of healing. So it's really helpful when you've got the uh, the auto attacks from the gray main and uh, maybe that meteor coming in from Ragnaros. That's a lot of fast hits there that, uh, that increase Diva's health rather quickly. Both teams at 16. So this is the time for Probius to look for that opportunity to get back into this game. And they're going to get uh, the chain. Ragnaros is going to get stunned. And Salvation going to keep the team alive. The knockback coming in to interrupt it. 
Uh, but now a five versus four as Johanna gonna get stunned by the Immortal. And a big chain combo gonna delete the Johanna and Stukov immediately after. Orphea falling to the Vala down below. And now with uh, a wide open lane, it's looking like uh, the call is for the core. Now, Vala doesn't have a ton of health. She doesn't have a ton of mana. So this might not be enough. They may be able to get damage, but I don't, I don't know if they can do enough damage to the core. We'll see. Uh, certainly with Greymane in the top, they're, they're not going to have any major issues. Can Greymane get this kill onto ETC? ETC is not the big damage, but if you can take him out, that's huge. Kel'Thuzad, however, is going to fall. Greymane needs to go in and find somebody. They've got 30% on the core. You gotta get these kills. Vala almost down, is going to dive. Can she make it away? The Q is doing damage to the core, 1%, and it will go down. And doing the last man standing will give Rise and Grind the 2-0 victory over Probius. The Probius strikes back. Not tonight, says Rise and Grind. Eight kills to twelve in that in that last game, and it felt a little bit harder. This one, this one definitely felt like uh, Probius had a, a more difficult time um, getting the the value out of the kills that they needed to be able to secure victory. Uh, and Rising Grind doing an absolutely fantastic job. And I gotta say, once again, Brother Nature, with those Kel'Thuzad combos, doing absolute work. In the previous game, I felt like it was just simply the awareness and the communication of, hey, we have these talents, these cooldowns, and things like that. This time, it just felt like, oh, this was just good mage play. But again, just like in game number one, uh, the, I cannot understate the value of the team, right? I mean, there was so much value there. Anduin with those salvations, uh, which coincidentally enough had some challenges, right? I mean, there were a couple of times that, that those did not go uh, super great for the team. Vala did a lot of work doing her job, even just, just killing that immortal, getting it down, right? Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then those ETC, you know, follow up the, the power slides and all that stuff. So, you know, again, the team did a fantastic job and, uh, you know, a little bit of an upset, but it's it's only two points of difference in those standings. So, you know, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not a huge upset. Let me actually update the brackets here. Show that. I'll see if I can get us an interview here. All right, we'll go to the standings and the brackets. There you go, Rise and Grind continuing on. They will face against Hot Potato next. And I gotta figure out who the, who the captain is of, uh, of Rise and Grind, because I actually don't know. See if I can pull that up here. Ooh, there they are. And that is Aaron. All right, so it looks like, uh, oh, there we go. So I am joined here by Eris from, is, am I saying that right? Is it Eris? Yeah, it's Eris. Eris, okay, from Rise and Grind, uh, the captain. And uh, hey, listen, congratulations. A 2-0 victory uh, finished out on the Battlefield of Eternity. How's your team feeling here at this point? Uh, thanks. Um, we, we were feeling good after that win. We were a little nervous going into this just because we've been on a slide against these top teams. Um, but we, we pulled out the win tonight, so it was good. So what would you say that you would attribute your uh, your victory to tonight? You mentioned you've been in a slide from some of the top teams. Obviously, in the regular season, you guys had a 2-0 victory over this team. Um, so what what do you feel like you did differently tonight that, that brought you this victory? 
Yeah, I think part of it was we were trying to switch up our comps, trying to like diversify. But this tonight, we kind of went back to what we knew. Um, a lot of comfort picks from us. Sure, sure. And you could you could definitely see that. And, uh, you know, it, it was pretty clear. I want to ask one specific question about the communication in okay. in your team. So in game number one, in my opinion, just as uh, an impartial observer, a hundred percent of the reason you guys win that game is because Mephisto knows how to use his gladiator medallions. So when that took place, how did that communication go? Because it, in my mind, it went, "Hey, uh, I'm about to die, but I'm okay. Go get him." Yeah, that's that's pretty much. Once we caught on to like what they were trying to do um, with the time loop and Mephisto, we kind of just decided like, okay, if if we see the loop going, we all have to go forward, not run back. And it, and it worked, right? I mean, Mephisto yeah. makes it out. You guys in the first one get, I think, all four of the team members that were there. The second round, you get both of the both of the frontliners. Uh, Malfurion had an absolutely fantastic uh, Twilight Dream and yeah, exactly. uh, and really played it well. So, you know, the, the fact that you guys did those things uh, is really, you know, cornerstone to your victory in game number one. Um, anything else? Was there Were there any moments in game number one that you thought were really, like, just fantastic, highlight worthy moments that you were like hey man this was so good so i was gonna call out the that one twilight dream fight too just because that was just a, a chef's kiss of a moment right there because it got i think three or four of them and then we just cleaned up after that um, so it then... wasn't three or four of them but it felt like it because it w it was just uh may and chen but chen okay. had all of the pandas but you're absolutely yeah. correct that was up in that top uh that top fight up by the um, Frozen Punisher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that I, I it, that engage was starting to feel a little iffy, but then once that came out, um, followed up by like both me and Brother Nature, uh, that that fight was probably like my play of the game, if you will, for that that one. Yeah, that was that was really fantastic. I mean, the other ones that you guys had, I mean, there were really three plays in that game. Two of them were, you know, Mephisto you know, medallions and then that one. Um, and that, but that was one where the whole team kind of played it well together. Uh, just, just without, you know, the, the enemy starting the engagement uh, For sure. with, with that temporal loop. So we get into battlefield of eternity. It's, uh, their map pick. You guys get the first pick. Um, what was your, what was your communication like in between games? Was, was there anything you guys really talked about as far as like, Hey, let's make sure we do this or don't let them do that. Like, what is that like? What's the locker room like for you? Yeah, we were actually trying to figure out more what map, uh, cause we, we weren't sure what they were going to pick. So we were trying to figure out like both scenarios, what map we wanted to play. And if we had first pick what, you know, what pick we were trying to go. Um, we, we actually ended up talking more about the maps just cause we figured they'd take first pick again. Um, but then they, they sent the invite for BOE and then we kind of just had to think on the fly at that point. Sure. So was your draft when you kind of, uh, started that game, was your draft generally in mind or did it kind of evolve as you saw how the, how the draft was playing? Uh, specifically for the second one, it, it kind of evolved over time. We were, we didn't really have a, a strong, cause we did, weren't talking about it. So we didn't have a, a strong um, preference for first pick but uh once we got the diva and then saw a couple of theirs it started to evolve sure and uh on a scale of one to automatically banned from every game in the future uh where do you think kelfazad fits in that role now <laughs> um probably on the upper end of that scale just because in our experience um brother nature our kel player like he'll play the first game as Kel, and then it'll just get immediately banned out for the second or third. So I, I can't imagine why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys had a lot of really great combos. Was there any particular moment in that game that you, you just felt like was a, a major shining moment? Uh, the second game, um, the second coin, I think, because that's the one I remember where like we were actually really caught on to, onto what they were trying to do, and we dove the Chromie, I believe, and the Stukov, and then uh, at that Orphea. point just cleaning up afterwards. Chromie was. Good. Oh yeah, Orphea. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. No, you guys played it really well. Now, uh, 
because I've got some time here, I have 30 minutes until my next cast, so I'm going to ask you just a, a little bit more about your team. Um, I'm not familiar with the name prior to this season. Is this the first season for you in NGS? Have you done other events before this? Yeah, we've been in uh, a few Heroes Lounge leagues, but this is the first NGS league that we've been in. Gotcha. Um, shout outs to NyQuil. He's the one that actually told us about you know there actually being another league, <laughs> and uh, it was fun. Sure, awesome. And this is your first opportunity. You get into the playoffs. Uh, you guys are in a pretty competitive division, um, and yep. you mentioned that you guys had had some challenges against some of the uh, higher up teams. It looks like your next opponents, I th think, if I remember correctly, is Hot Potato. potato. Yep. So, uh, so how did that go for you in the regular season, and and how confident are you that uh, when you play against them next week, that you'll come out with another victory? Uh, let's just say it went poorly. <laughs> okay. the, the the games against them, their their Kerrigan just effed us up. So that that's definitely something on our radar to look out for. It's it's actually funny because the at the day after that match, I think was uh, the patch where Kerrigan got updated and then banned <laughs> from NGS. Nice, and you're going. If only we'd scheduled yeah. it <laughs> a yeah, little nice. bit later. Oh man! All right. Well, uh, listen. I'm not going to keep you for the whole night here. Uh, any shout outs before uh, before we take off? Uh, yeah. Uh, shout outs to Nyquil, like I said, for you know, introducing us. This this whole league has been a blast. Um, and we we got to shout out our queens, Carly Ray, uh, Casey Musgraves. That's yeah. That's about it. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Well, you guys are moving on to the uh, semifinals for Division D East here, uh, facing off against Hot's Potato next week. Uh, it's going to be a steep uphill battle, it sounds like, and uh, I look forward to it. I, I hope uh, I hope you guys have a, a fantastic set when you get there, and uh, good luck to you. Hey, thanks, Arrow. Thanks for uh, casting tonight, too. Yeah. For, oh, and, and by the way, thanks for being accommodating on the time. Uh, really appreciate that. It makes it a little bit easier to, you know, be able to get more casts in. When, yep. when teams have a little bit of so I really For appreciate sure. you guys making that. Cool, thanks. Yep. Have a good night. You too. All right, so that's it for us for this round. Uh, I've got another match coming up here in a half an hour. So, and I do want to shout out Totsky. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the raid. It's so great to see you. I didn't want to interrupt the interview. Uh, my apologies, but it's so awesome. I'm, I'm really glad that you are here and everybody else is here that came over from Totsky's stream. Uh, again, as you can see, this is a best of three. We're at the end of this best of three, but we are gonna have a best of three coming up soon. So, I mean, for a little bit here, I'm, I'm cool to just kind of hang out, chit chat with you guys while we, uh, while we get things prepared for the next round um, and uh, just say hello. Uh, Prosman Pat, appreciate the bits, the 69 bits, of course, Pat, they're part of Regen Divine. The next couple of teams that we've got coming up are Regen Divine and Knights That Stay Bronze. So, uh, you know, you're not going to want to miss out on that. This is a Division D West matchup. And I think also another 3-6 combo. Go figure, like, I think that I'm I'm hitting all of the 3-6 uh, teams of of this week, anyways, in the playoffs for casting. It just just worked out that way. I didn't, I didn't pick that on purpose or anything. Um, but let me go ahead and I'm gonna just I'm just gonna run the end credits so to speak. I'll be right back in just a minute, and uh, then we can chat for a few while we get set up for the next one. So, BRB, don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. 